Well, the Tokyo 2020 Olympics are just one year from today, and there's going to be some brand new games in the mix. Like I said earlier, one of them, you could say, was a sport that was on the fringes several years ago. Not one a lot of people thought about as competitive, but now it's on fire. It's rock climbing. And Sharon Yu is apparently our rock climbing reporter, so she's going to show us how it's done. It's a sport that demands everything, from your fingertips to the problem-solving parts of your brain. The level of climbing has gone up incredibly, even just since the announcement of the Olympics. Ayosho Peju is the head route setter, kind of the lead puzzle creator at Minneapolis Bouldering Project. When did you start climbing? Uh, I started when I was 18. And he couldn't be more excited that the three types of rock climbing will be an Olympic sport. Making the climbing and all the aspects of the sport are being uh, a little more popularized. More kids especially are able to try this sport that used to be a kind of like a fringe sport. So there are three categories of climbing. Speed climbing, which is as you would imagine, kind of just a head-to-head -head race. And then lead climbing, which is a style of climbing where you climb with a rope up a route that is designed to be difficult enough that only the winner will top. And last but not least, bouldering. No ropes, just hands, feet, knees, whatever. The discipline is a lot around uh, problem solving. The boulders are designed to ask the climbers to figure out how exactly they can climb. Whoever can climb the most number of routes or problems in a fixed amount of time is the winner. The catch, Olympic climbers will have to do all three. One of the coolest things about the sport though is that there's not one person who might have been created for it. I'm short. Um, I do have a lot of challenges, but I can also work that to my advantage because I can scrunch into smaller spaces. Yeah, and that's usually what's going to happen is that in the problem solving, a lot of what you're doing is deciding how you personally will be able to solve uh, these physical puzzles. Meaning no matter what shape, you'll find something challenging. And now that climbing is officially on the Olympic docket, the future of young climbers is something to watch for. I'm seeing like these power climbers, they're like seven years old. Um, kind of cool to see that they're so young and they might be professionals one day. Always interesting to see kids enter a sport that we entered later. They're way better at, at almost every aspect. The problem solving, physically they're more flexible and more dynamic. Uh, and they, they haven't built themselves into the same kind of mental boxes that we have. So IO says the team selection should be happening right about now and throughout the next month or so. And there are a few Minnesota climbers to watch for and they could end up representing Team USA. This is so cool. A lot of new sports in Tokyo in 2020. This one included. What I'm curious to see is it's a cool sport. How will they make it exciting on television? Oh is my gosh, did you see the speed climbing though? We're, well, that's just bananas. We were like screaming. That was amazing. <laughs> yeah, I just wonder. Yeah, it'd be really cool. And like, can you imagine like what's it like to be like in charge of calling it? Like, you know, oh, the play by play. Yeah. Maybe you should do it. <laughs> I don't know enough to do that kind of stuff. <laughs> You're looking for a way to go to the Olympics. This is it. Yes. Please send me. I will go. This is her official ask of the Tokyo Games. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much, Sharon. We appreciate you.